Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a comparison between a Jeep Grand Cherokee L and a Dodge Durango. Now, this video is pretty interesting because although these vehicles have a pretty different MSRP amount, Jeep has some really aggressive incentives on the Grand Cherokee and Grand Cherokee L right now, and so the actual selling price of both these vehicles is a lot closer than you would expect. And so now we have to answer the question, if the money's about the same, which one do you go with? Before we get into this video, though, a huge shout out and thank you to the Doug Smith Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in Spanish Fork, Utah for giving me some time with both of the these cars. I'll include a link to their inventory in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And then on a side note, if you want to save time money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So powering the Durango is a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter V6 that goes through an 8-speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 18 around town and then 25 on the highway with power outputs being about 290 horsepower and about 260 pound-feet of torque. And guess what? The Grand Cherokee L has the exact same powertrain with roughly the same power outputs and the same exact fuel economy. Now, before we go to the front ends, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Now, when it comes to front end styling, they're actually substantially different. So with the Durango, this is an SXT launch edition. And so you guys can see, you've got some like chrome trim here on the front end. And then notice with the lights, right? Those are kind of lighter with the bezel itself. And it has the Durango's normal, like aggressive in your face, like crazy venting look. Where's the Grand Cherokee, right? It's a little bit more boxed, a little bit more upright with the styling. And then you actually have the cool daytime running lights with this. And then everything's all blacked out on this one because this one has the altitude package. Now, coming around the side with the Durango, our tire wheel setup is 265, 60, 18 in the front and over in the rear. Whereas with the Grand Cherokee, it is 265, 50, 20 in the front and over in the rear. And then you guys can obviously see the design difference with the wheels. Larger spokes here with the Grand Cherokee, and they're blacked out. Whereas with the Durango, smaller spokes, but we got more of them. And then here's your full side view with the Durango. You guys can see here with the fender flares and everything. I think it's a pretty cool look, but notice the overall silhouette. And if you compare that to the Grand Cherokee, the Grand Cherokee is obviously boxier, but like the overall silhouette is very similar with both of the vehicles. So here are the key fobs with both of the vehicles. You guys can see the Jeep key fob, definitely a bit fancier, and it has like a nice weighted feel to it. And functionality wise, you got your opening for the hatch and then remote start function built in too. Now popping into the cargo area with the Grand Cherokee, you guys can see there's a decent amount of space behind the third row. And then notice here with the hatch to lower it down. Now with the third row to lower it down, you just have this little tab that you pull and then you can throw it down just like that seat is thrown down. And we also have a 12 volt there on the back as well. Now when it comes to cargo room here in the back of the Durango, it's literally identical to the Grand Cherokee. And you can see we've got a little bit more storage space down below. Got a 12 volt here on the side and then same exact setup with the seats, but with the hatch, we actually have to throw it down ourselves. Now when it comes to rear end styling, we obviously have the new style with the Grand Cherokee, which I think looks very sharp, really modern as well. And then with the Durango, it's actually aged really well. I'm still a big fan of the light bar design with it. And I like how the exhaust tip is so prominent there down below. But let me know which rear end style you think looks better between the two. Now legroom here in the second row of the Grand Cherokee is actually really good. We've got a storage pocket right here. Look at the vent in the back. And then you guys can see the trim here at the top of the door panel. And look at the stitching and the padding here and the control there for the window. And then we do have our own climate zone here in the back with some USBs, full power outlet, all that. And then here are the seats, by the way, really cool with the design. Hey, you've got like the inserts there in the center and I think it looks good. And then also headroom, by the way, solid. Now in the third row of the Grand Cherokee L, um, legroom's pretty typical for this segment of crossover, e even more so on the uh, larger side, I'd say. Anyways, got an event back here, got some more USB action, and then headroom back here is good. And also the seats back here, they're, they're the same as the uh, second row seats, so they just they look just as nice. So here is the legroom in the Durango. You guys can see a little storage pocket here, and then notice the trim here on the door panel. Doesn't look as fancy as the Grand Cherokee. Still got some vent action back here with our own climate zone, but the controls are up top. And then we actually have cloth seats with this, full cloth seats. And then headroom back here, you guys can see it's pretty solid. Now the Durango actually has a, well, bench seat, so getting into the third row here is a little bit different, but legroom, pretty much the same. Um, again, not as like fancy here. We don't have any like USBs or anything in the back. And then we still got these cloth seats, but headroom back here, solid. It feels pretty much like the same cabin. 
Well, let's start her up. Grand Cherokee, pretty cool. So I guess we'll start with the uh, steering wheel first. I love the design of the new Grand Cherokee steering wheel. I think it looks really upscale. And notice we got like paddle shifters here on the back. You got this nice trim here at the bottom. Controls for the center stack. We got our adaptive cruise control here on the other side. And then uh, quickly go over here the door panel. I like the trim here and then nice padding down below. See all of our controls here. Notice front two windows are automatic. And then taking a look at the gauge cluster itself, full digital gauge cluster here in the Grand Cherokee, which you can use to scroll through different menus, see different bits of info on the vehicle itself. And if we move from that to the infotainment system, we just have a regular backup camera. It does have a zoom function though, which is a nice feature to have. And then response time with the screen itself, it's actually really good. Um, you can see pressing the buttons. It does take a second for some of the menus to load up, but at least it like responds to my finger instantly. Notice so we have heated seats, heated steering wheel, dual zone climate with this. And then up above, it might be hard to see because of the lighting, um, but auto stop, start, lane departure, stability control, hazard lights, parking sensors. And then that is just for your sport mode. Turn that on, is at the uh, top. It actually gives you a cool animation here. It'll say sport right there. And then you guys can see down below, we've got our analog controls for the radio, um, the heated seat controls, the climate controls, all of that. And then you can see this little tab that covers things up. Wireless phone charging pad inside. And then got some USB action with some 12 volt action as well. And then here's the little dial shifter. Pretty cool with that nice feel of the material. And they got some cup holders right here. And then notice the center console. Good storage space. And then you can see here with the like stitching and everything on the dash. Look at the trim down below. And then the glove box. And then you still have a manual mirror dimmer right here. Um, and then just like a button here to open up the hatch and then no center for anything like that. Well, let's start her up. Durango. So with the steering wheel, I think it actually looks pretty sweet. Notice we have adaptive cruise control with this. Um, other than that though, um, controls are pretty similar to the Grand Cherokee. It doesn't have paddle shifters or anything like that. Just a different design with the steering wheel itself. And then again with the door panel, again, not as uh, fancy looking as Grand Cherokee. Do have automatic for the front two windows, which is pretty cool. And then before we go over the gauge cluster, I quickly want to show you, we got trailer brake controls from the factory, this one. But anyways, here is the gauge cluster itself. So mostly analog, right? We do have a screen here in the center though that we can scroll through different bits of info with the Durango. So a little bit of a different setup. Still have a sport mode with this though, which is pretty cool. And then popping it into reverse, we do have a backup camera with trajectory lines. Resolution actually uh, not as good as the Grand Cherokee. So it's a little bit different. And then as for the infotainment system, yeah, pretty much the same, right? in terms of the response with the system itself. Have the headrest fold, but we don't have uh, heated seats or anything like that. And then yeah, look at the trim down below, it's pretty nice. And then our controls here for the radio, the climate controls, your drive mode, select stability control, parking sensor. Then you guys can see here with the auxiliary switches. And then you got some storage space here. And then shifter for that eight speed automatic. Got some cup holder action. And then you can see here with the center console. Got a 12 volt inside as well. And look at like the padding, everything goes across. And then you can see here with the glove box, good storage space inside as well. Um, and then similar situation up top, no center for anything. Now, when it comes to MSRP sticker price, the Grand Cherokee stickers for about $53,000, the Durango stickers for about $43,000. Like I said at the beginning of the video, as of me filming this video right now, Jeep has some pretty aggressive incentives on that Grand Cherokee. And so they're not the exact same selling price, but the selling price of the vehicles is way closer than the $10,000 MSRP difference that is between them. Okay, sorry, I had to quickly pop back into the Durango because it is ridiculously windy and I'm already worried that like part of the audio in this video is going to be horrible because of the wind. So sorry about that. But I just want to quickly cap things off. I have driven a ton of Durangos this year and a ton of Grand Cherokees. And so I don't really need to drive them back to back to be able to tell you guys the differences because I've driven these vehicles back to back several times. And here's the deal. They actually drive super, super similar to each other. Even though they're technically different vehicles and all that kind of stuff, the actual driving dynamics is very similar. Now the Durango does kind of have like a slightly firmer feel, whereas the Grand Cherokee is a little bit softer. Um, but overall driving dynamics are very similar. Again, the engine's the same, transmission's the same. So the overall performance is the same. And so really the biggest difference between these two is going to be the exterior styling with the vehicle. So which exterior do you like more? And then which interior do you like more with the features? And so I want you guys to let me know in the comment section below. Again, if it's not exactly the same, but if the money's pretty close, would you rather go with this Durango or that Grand Cherokee? I'll see you.